everybody, how you doing? Uh, I just got this group of used Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, little sampling of uh, used games, and I thought this was a good opportunity to go through my cleaning regime with you guys before I start using these. I think it's really important whenever you get used games like these to make sure that you spend some time and clean them beforehand. You don't want to be sticking dirty games and other people's problems into your console and end up damaging that or having to deep clean that after the fact. So I'm going to go through the different cleaning solutions from the least invasive to the most invasive. <clears throat> the first one is usually what most games need. So we'll start off with uh, Metal Gear. We're just going to pop open our container of uh, Q-tips here. Uh, these are just dollar store Q-tips. They're buck twenty-five and came with a nice container, so that worked well. Uh, this is also super handy. Um, I bought this. The 70% rubbing alcohol works okay, um, but I ended up emptying it and refilling it with 90%. The 90% obviously has less additive, so it dries faster and it's not going to leave uh, stuff behind in your game. But this bottle's handy because it's a pump bottle, so basically you can put your Q-tip over the uh, thing, pump it a few times, and your Q-tip is now saturated with, uh, with alcohol. So it works out really, really well. You don't have to stick your thing into the bottle. Um, so the easiest cleaning solution, you just take your soaked Q-tip and you run it along the contacts. This is super invasive because you don't actually have to disassemble the cartridge at all. And you see, oh, there's a little bit of gunk. So you're going to do one side and then the other. It's back and forth, somewhat vigorously. That side was significantly worse than the other one. So what I generally like to do is continue doing this until the Q-tip comes away relatively clean. Now it's Bo in the background being our cheerleader. So you can see it's already better. There's just a little, little bit of gunk on that one. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable. And then I'll take another Q-tip and just lightly go over top of it to take off any excess alcohol that might be on it. And you can see that's coming away pretty much clean. I think you can see there the reflection, the amount of light that the pins are now reflecting. Bo's here to help! Down you go. Sorry about that. We are working unscripted after all. Alrighty, so for a basic Nintendo game cleaning, one that doesn't look like it's too, too bad, that should be all that it takes. Um, gets the pins nice and shiny, and uh, that game should be ready to go. Next, we'll move on to a Genesis game. Um, so this is going to be one of the first games that requires a game bit to pull apart. This is a copy of Side Pocket. Uh, it's looking a little grungy. Um, the label is a little worse for wear but uh, not overall terrible. We could probably just get away with an alcohol clean on this one. The contacts don't look too, too bad. But I'm going to go through the different uh, cleaning methods so you guys can see how to execute them. So this is a 4.5 millimeter game bit. There's 4.5 and 3.8. 4.5 is common to Sega Genesis, and the 3.8 is common to most Nintendo products that use the game bit. So we'll just go ahead and pop these two open. Just like that. Crack open the top. And yeah, the sh pins are still relatively shiny. Um, there's a little bit of wear and tear, as you would expect for a game that's been used. Uh, but it looks like overall, yeah, that circuit board's nice and clean. There's no dust on it. Everything's, uh, everything's looking pretty mint. So the next, uh, slightly more invasive, because you have to open the cartridge um, cleaning solution you can do, is the standard uh, the standard latex white eraser. So the important thing to do with this, um, if you want to make it easier on yourself, don't go side to side like this, because it will leave particulate matter from this in between. Um, so if you just want to work the pins like this, just like that, you see it's taken off a bit of the grunge, for sure. So we'll do half the pins and see if we can tell the difference. So 
So already I can see that the shine is more uniform on this side. Um, so you can see I stopped right there, and then these ones look significantly more tarnished. I'm hoping that that's picking up on the camera. Just like that. Let's go ahead and finish cleaning the rest of them. And there we go. That looks nice and clean. Okay. So we'll just drop that board back in. Always be mindful of uh, how the game looked when you pulled it out. Uh, you don't want to accidentally install it backwards like I just about did. Um, most of these games are keyed though, so they won't fit that way. There we go. There we go. Good as new. Moving on to Super Nintendo. We're going to have to switch to the 3.8 millimeter game bit for this one. Um, so Super Nintendo cartridges are uh, relatively easy to pull together or pull apart, but you have to be careful because it's held together by two screws and two clips on the top for most of the, most of the uh, cartridges. This is a copy of Star Trek Deep Space Nine Crossroads in Time. Crossroads of time. And somebody was nice enough to put all the uh, codes on the back there, so it's stuck with it forever. So, yeah, you just want to make sure you pry open from the bottom versus trying to reef on it. I've had a couple where the plastic was a little brittle and you end up taking off the uh, top of the clip. It's always interesting to see how uh, much wasted space is in these actual cartridges. Now, if you're finding that uh, your Q-tip method isn't working, but you don't think you need to resort to, you know, weapons of mass destruction, you can go with just a simple toothbrush. I just picked this one up. When you're uh, picking out your toothbrush for doing the cleaning, you're definitely going to want to make sure that you go with one that uh, has soft bristles. You don't want to be risking damaging traces or anything like that. Um, I think it'd be hard to get even a firm bristle one to do that, but better safe than sorry. You want to be as gentle with these old cartridges as possible because they're uh, getting fewer and far between, right? So um, so these are nice soft bristles. Again, we'll soak it in the alcohol. Like that. And then just a And then a Q-tip to swap off and the excess, just like that. It doesn't hurt to pull it apart when you're using Q-tips to do it either. Um, it's good to see what you're doing and see how much you're pulling off. And uh, obviously with the cartridge apart, you'll sometimes see more trouble spots. So it's helpful. There we go. That's nice and clean. And uh, again, you want to make sure that you put it in keyed properly. So you can see this cartridge is again designed to only go back together one way, which is good for us. Most of the official cartridges are going to be like that. Um, you have to watch with bootlegs because a lot of times bootlegs are not designed with your safety in mind or the safety of the cartridge in mind. They're just designed in mass production, get it out the door. So I'm going to move on to an N64 cartridge. Um, I'm not going to use any. I'm not going to use the particularly abrasive cleaning method on this um, because this cartridge, I believe, is working. Um, I have a, a Game Boy game that I've had since I was a kid that doesn't work anymore, and I've gone through the basic cleaning stuff, um, and it hasn't worked. So we're going to use the more abrasive method for that, and we'll see if we can't get that up and running. So this is just to give you a look at the inside of an N64 cartridge. They're different than the other ones. They have uh, usually have RF shielding built into the cartridge. And the clip is on the bottom. So it has a similar clip to the uh, N64, but they're on the bottom instead of the top. Um, so we're going to have to remove, and I'm going to need a smaller screwdriver for that. 
Alrighty, we're back. Sorry about the jump cut there. I had to go find a smaller Phillips head screwdriver. Go ahead and take these screws out. It's also helpful uh, if you're dismantling something for the first time, even if it's something as simple as a cartridge, to take pictures as you go along so that if you get lost putting it back together after the fact, you have reference that you can use to put it back together. So you can see the chip is going to be facing, well, technically the back, but facing up based on the way the cartridge is sitting now. So we'll keep that in mind when we're putting it back together. So it's got this plastic shield that keeps the uh, dust and grime out and creates a nice seal. Um, you can see there it sits flush with the circuit board, so it creates a not quite airtight seal, but enough to keep the uh, dirt and gunk from getting past the pins. Now this one's looking pretty dirty, so we'll go ahead and give it a, uh, a clean with just the alcohol, I think. Actually, let's go with the eraser first and we'll see how that looks. Also a good idea not to be cleaning over the case. You don't need to put all the uh, particulate matter that you're pulling off of it into the case where it's going to potentially interfere with, although this is non-conductive, so it's not going to damage anything. But Still. Still not looking super clean. Go with another Q-tip. Now she's getting some of her Charlie Sheen back. Um, with the Q-tips, you're also going to have to be careful because these pins will pull strands of cotton out of it. And uh, you're going to want to clean that up. Again, non-conductive, so not much of an issue. It just looks better. And that's all it should take. Put the dust shield back in place. The R sorry, the dust shield back in place, yes. It's a good idea. Um, so you see there's pin here and a pin here. So when you put this in, you need it to go in between the two of them and that gets it more or less centered. So you can then hopefully just drop it into place. Like that. I guess I shouldn't say that's a pin, it's more, a, more of a circuit board nub, but for all intents and purposes. It's a centering pin designed to make sure it only goes back together one way, which is, again, good for us. For stuff that's not meant to be disassembled, Nintendo sure made it easy to assemble and disassemble it. And clips on the bottom, screws on the top. That one should be good to go. So, I'm going to crack into this Game Boy game now, and the cleaning method we're going to use for this is very abrasive. I'm going to use Tarnix, which is designed for doing metal polishing. You have to think of this as basically liquid sandpaper. It's designed to take off um, a minuscule amount of the top layer of the metal. So this is kind of a weapon last resort, because you can only do this a finite number of times before it's going to irreparably damage the pins. Um, but this game, I've gone through all the other cleaning methods and it doesn't work, so we're gonna get, going to give it a shot and see what happens. I already have another copy of this game as well, um, but it would be nice to restore my original one. There we go. So, uh, just quickly, I'll show you that the Game Boy cartridges are held together by one screw, and it's a slide and lock method. So, as soon as that screw is uh, removed, it still won't come apart, but if you slide it, it does. That's what happened there. So the pins don't look terribly dirty on this, and the pins are on one side only. Um, you could technically clean this with it being in the case still, but when it comes to doing the Tarnax approach, I prefer to pull it apart so that I can see if any of it's getting anywhere on the board, because it's corrosive, so I don't want to leave any of it sitting. So the first thing we're going to do is crack open the Tarnax. And we're going to take a Q-tip. going to dip it into the solution. And we're just going to gently go back and forth over the pins, and you're going to see they're going to start to shine up real nice. Then we're going to take the dry end of the Q-tip, and we're going to just wipe it up. Now 
Now here's the other thing I always do when I'm working with, I wiped off the excess, so theoretically it should be good, but I like to take alcohol and uh, just get on a Q-tip, pump it up onto it, and uh, I like to go over it after the fact, just to make sure that I'm neutralizing and removing as much of the, uh, the extra Tarnax as possible. Perfect. Back on like that. Lock it together. And now it's entirely possible the problem with this game is actually electronic and not cleaning. The pins did look relatively clean, but you never know. Now it's time for the moment of truth. And we're back! So, couldn't find some double A's for my original Game Boy. So I can just hang out for the experiment and we'll see what happens. So I've got my uh, Junker Game Boy Advance SP. This is one I picked up, I think, at Value Village for $5. It's pretty marked up. Um, I usually use it for testing Game Boy games when I get them because I'd rather not uh, ruin one of my better condition systems. Go ahead and lock it in, and... Oh, well, that's a good sign. It says Nintendo. And nothing. Well, you can't say we didn't try. We certainly did give it the old call try. I'll pull it apart one more time just to take a quick look. Just want to see. Yeah. Well, just in case there's any residue left on it, I doubt it. Take the eraser and we'll give it a quick once over. I don't think this is going to do anything, but you know, Never know when to quit. I won't put the screw back into it, we just need the cartridge to get it properly situated. And that is it for that, my friends. Obviously it's something electronic with this game. Um, could be anything. Maybe in a future episode we'll go through and we'll check all the traces and see if there's a uh, anything stopping uh, connectivity between the uh, the chips or uh, the resistors look like they're fine so okay I'm a sucker for punishment so let's go ahead and crack this sucker open and uh, I've got my soldering iron ready to go so we're just gonna give it a quick once over and go all across the pins and reflow any of the solder points just in case just in case it's one of these solder points has gotten weak over the years and it's just not making good contact anymore. You don't want to spend too much time on any of the pins because you don't want to accidentally shift the uh, chip around. It's not too bad on uh, these older games because the pins are actually big enough that you can solder to them, but on newer games shifting around could be a disaster. And see it just melts and refills the solder, it gets a little more shine to it. It burns off any of the oxidization that's built up on it over the years, which is why it suddenly gets shiny again and lets you know that you've, you know, refloated it successfully. Go ahead and drop that in there. We'll see if that has made any difference at all. If it's just a weak solder point, then we may have a functioning game again. And look at that. Just as quick and simple as that, we have a functioning Game Boy game again. And the USS Enterprise has never looked prettier. We have one cartridge left, which is just a Sega game, uh, Sega Master System game. Let's see if we can crack that open. And uh, this is more just to get a look at the inside. I believe, if memory serves, it looks more or less like a Genesis cartridge on the inside. Um, 
the design hasn't changed that much. The uh, Sega Genesis is actually pretty much compatible with the Master System, which is how they were able to release the uh, power base unit, which basically just connects the proper pins from this cartridge to the proper pins on the, uh, the uh, Genesis. Yeah, so super, super tiny game. Not much to it at all. Looking pretty clean, although there is some, uh, I don't know, it looks like there's uh, something been added or removed to the pins at the top, so they go from copper to uh, like a silverish looking metal. So that's interesting. Well, we'll give it an old clean. Just like that. This is a bit of a catch-22 because you get these games and they're guaranteed to be working um, and often they're, I see, this one was supposed to have been cleaned and clearly not so much. Um, it's a catch-22 because you spend the time cleaning them and there's always a small chance, like a very small chance that you would damage them while you clean them. So you could clean a game and then plug it in and then you have to decide whether or not it's something you potentially did to break it. Uh, if it doesn't work, or if somebody sold you a broken game. So it's a catch-22 because you don't want to put dirty games in your system, but you also um, want to be able to prove that it's not something that you did if the game doesn't work when you get it. And that is that. Well, I hope you guys found these videos informative. Uh, if you like the video, why not toss me a thumbs up? If uh, you're not subscribed here, please do and click the bell so you're notified when you when I put out new content. I'm going to be doing, obviously, lots of gaming content. Um, if there's something you want to see me clean or pull apart in the future, you can toss it in the comments below and I'll uh, show you how I go about doing that. And as always, I am James from Print and Play. Until next time, stay creative.